I'm not gonna lie, I dig the opening of this movie that introduces us to the concept of life-size game pieces, but I'm also not the kind of guy to be distracted enough to not notice the 40 seconds of logos. What former Supreme Court Justice... Oliver Wendell Holmes! Correct. Yes! Again, I'd like to ask the players to allow me... To finish the question! What kind of goddamn anarchy is this trivia night? Yelling out answers from the bar gets you a point? This game is established enough that they have t-shirts denoting the captains, so you know they have rules. Also, f off with this premature answer collation. There were no context clues in the beginning of that question that would lead to a specific chief justice, nor are there any categories that would lead him to even guess this. You got this last one. You got this. Um, oh, that's, uh, uh, Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn. The f hell f She literally drew a square. A square! Maybe a rectangle. You didn't guess that You are cheating. This makes me irrationally mad. Also, does Pictionary still use those huge tablets of paper? What a waste, man. Get an erasable whiteboard up in here. Jesus Christ, how many people came to this wedding? They met at Bar Trivia, for f**k's sake. Also, if this couple has this level of addiction to gaming, where they play a video game at the reception with their backs to the crowd, these mother that attends it should immediately switch from party mode to intervention mode. I'm not loving your semen. College girlfriend, meet my fertility doctor. It's not going on. Oh, well, you did say even when you were a kid, you would freak out if you lost at anything. Projects position. Sibling rivalry can be very powerful. Cain and Abel, the Baldwins. This movie is riddled with inside references to Hollywood, and they're mostly hilarious. But everyone knows that Rachel McAdams was in Aloha with Alec Baldwin, so this paradoxical universe has really started to tear apart. Wait, no one knew that Baldwin and McAdams were in Aloha together? Or that the movie Aloha exists? We're right next to the room where I masturbated. I could literally say this any day, anywhere in my house, and it would be true. Honey, Gary. Don't mention game night. Your old dice. I mean, credit. Also, I guess the audience needs this as an introduction to Gary's character, but does Max really have to explicitly tell Annie to avoid discussing the party? I've always enjoyed the camaraderie of good friends competing in games of chance and skill. Dude, I don't want to flood this video with sin removals every time Jesse Plemons makes me belly laugh, so I'm just going to take two off here and try and keep it in my pants for the rest of the movie. Three bags of Tostito scoops. Seriously, if you're having a party, you don't need three bags of scoops. Some people like regular tortilla chips. There are seven people coming to this party, including the two hosts. Three bags of scoops is excessive, unless one of the party games is an eating contest. Let's say you're having a party and you don't want your nosy neighbor to know about it, and you have a garage with a closing door. Why not park one vehicle on the street, then pull this party planning three bags of scoop buying joy wagon into the garage and close the door and never hear from the nosy neighbor at all? We don't owe him anything, right? You know, these two are pretty much dicks, right? I know they love each other and they're hilarious, but they're also dicks. Is there really anything outside being good at games and periodically not psychopaths that makes them appealing as humans? We didn't all meet our soulmate when we were 10 years old. I guess I do appreciate the need to work this character exposition into the dialogue, but who reminisces like this to their good friends on a standard hangout? I don't even talk to Chris about last week, man. I'm gonna start us off. I'm gonna start us off. Here we go. Let's do it. Yeah, man, I don't care that Max is trying to distract everyone. A guy that's this f***ing hard for game night would at least assign teams before starting charades. Maxie Pad. Come on, bring it in. <laughs> Older brothers. Poor man's Johnny Depp starred in Jericho. Skeet Ulrich! Movie acts like Ryan got this correct, but we all know the answer was Gerald McCraney. Also, poor man's Johnny Depp? Holy <laughs> I haven't seen Skeet Ulrich cut this deep since the end of Scream. Time! Oh. How many? Seven! Seven! The rules of this game of Party Password are vague at best. It appears that everyone can guess, but how does that work? If you're all competing as individual clue givers, why don't some of the folks guess poorly to make the clue giver look bad? And if you're on teams, why is the opposing team allowed to guess? And they're all actually trying here. No one is sabotaging this. Feels like this was written by someone that never played password games before. Famous actor that we met at the airport about eight years ago. Who? This scene is only to establish Max's inferiority complex with his brother. He and Annie have been shown to be f***ing superb at this sh but all of a sudden they both lose the complete ability to nail an extremely easy trivia question. He undermines you every chance he gets. You have never won a single game against him? I get that Brooks is better at everything, but you never won a single game? Not one? That's mathematically impossible. Even if he's cheating sometimes, that's like Ken Jennings' level of dominance, and I very much doubt that Brooks can locate a double jeopardy square with pinpoint accuracy. Good evening. Are we gonna skip the cleanup? I mean, if things are going the way I think they are, you're pretty much deferring it by roughly 12 minutes. They leave for dinner in broad-ass daylight, and Brooks said last week that his house was... It's only a couple miles away. But then it's total nighttime by the time these two arrive, so what gives? Brooks takes their games and throws them, and what the f***, man? You're not gonna know what's real and what's fake. This was the original mission statement for CinemaSins. <laughs> Seriously, a jump scare? In this movie, this is more out of place than if Mrs. Brown f***ed a fish man in the middle of Paddington 2. Never have I ever slept with a celebrity. Oh, I didn't uh, know. Okay. Whoops. You slept with a celebrity? 
No. If Michelle were going to eventually lie about this, why'd she take the drink in the first place? She's that committed to the rules of Never Have I Ever that she provoked this huge issue in her marriage? Well, then why are you breathing like you just got off the elliptical? Look, if her lying about a celebrity gets her breathing to the same rate she gets to after a workout on the elliptical, then either she is way too guilty feeling about the sex, or her elliptical workout is weak sauce. Maybe both. She's breathing normally, man. Contained within these dossiers. How the did those come from? When he entered the house, he wasn't carrying anything. Before we get started, I'm, I'm required to ask if any of you have any food allergies. If Henderson were to break character, why didn't he do it at the very beginning of the speech? Or get this information from Brooks? He's been super method right up until this moment. Also, food allergies for a kidnap murder mystery game? Are you giving them cupcakes at the end? Are the clues edible? The hell is with this question. Honestly, the actual destruction of the door, customer's property, should be all the red flag this group needs to realize the game has turned real. But whatever, they have wine and cheese and are written to be very gullible. You know, considering this part of the fight is happening outside of the living room, wouldn't at least one of the crew think something was up or at least would want to see it? My bloodless, bloodless bite, bloodless bite, bloodless bite. The sin here is that she doesn't kill him. He is so aggravating right now. Brooks's wallet? Who takes out their wallet and leaves it on the bedroom table before hosting an evening dinner party? Hi, yeah, I, I lost my credit card. I was wondering if you could tell me what the last few charges I made were. How does she get access to the account to get the information about the last few charges? This ain't set in 1989. They need at least two-factor authentication. Bye. What are, what are you doing? Just being a dick. He sure is, but these handles, even the fancy ones, always have an option of lifting up to open the door, not only pushing down. And it even briefly does go up, which should totally open the considering Ryan effortlessly moved the table in front of the door. Any of you pricks move and I'll execute every mother last one of you! Very nice, honey. Pulp Fiction, anybody? Explaining your references. Arms out. Knees apart if you have back problems. Jesus Christ, they were just talking about how disgusting these floors were when they walked in a few minutes ago, and now Annie wants to demonstrate yoga on that he survives this. Not even one broken bone. I just came from a six-hour murder mystery where I played the corpse. I must have dozed off before I had a chance to clean up. What? You didn't catch any Zs during the six hours of playing a corpse? Even if not, how did that gig make you exhausted? $17. You bought $17, thanks. What's with the derision, Lucky Charms? They were all supposed to be at game night the whole evening at Brooks's place. It's amazing he brought any cash at all. Shut up and get on the floor, all of you. Whoa. Ryan. Okay. Why are the fake kidnappers showing up just now? What were the participants supposed to be doing the whole time since Henderson got here? In movie time, it's been at least an hour or two, right? Here's the problem with people handling what they think are fake guns in movies. They're so goddamn certain. Like, there's zero possibility this could be real and loaded, even by mistake. This half-cock cockiness is bullcock. Bingo, bingo, I got him, baby. So only one of those three guys had keys in his pocket? That's preposterous. All guys have keys in their pockets. All. Literally all. No comedy in all film history gave more care to its cinematography than this film did. Two sins off. Oh my god, I shot you! These assholes did hear those gunshots, right? But dude is continuing to try and zombie his way into this room. And remember, these aren't the ones that are really after Coach Taylor. They're the felons hired by Gary that are just in this to get some parole relief. For two guys that ultimately end up having been hired by the cop neighbor for a ruse, they sure are acting recklessly during this chase in ways that could kill the people they are supposed to be fooling. Look, this is one of the movie's funniest scenes, but it's total bull****. You really think Max hasn't looked at both sides of his wounded arm even once between being shot and now? I thought you were going to your brother's house. I never said that. Why not say that you're back, since you obviously did say that earlier? This lie is just as stupid as the Astros saying their cheating had no effect on the outcome of the games they played. You have a framed photo of game night? Doesn't everyone have photographs of their best friends in their homes? Actually, no, they don't. I don't have any pictures of Kevin Smith, Chris, Mayor McCheese, or Devin Sawa. Oh, look, he's already on the police website. Seriously, Brooks's iPad, Brooks's desktop, Gary's cop computer, the lack of any device access blockades in this movie is ridiculous. Yeah, it's kind of funny, but what's up with this bloodthirsty dog, man? Is Max made of strawberry jam? Anyone with a tiny bit of common sense knows you cannot get rid of bloodstains with bottled water. Sorry, but that tiny ass dog did not shake blood up onto the top shelves of this Debbie display. That's a physics lie. You are... Here. I don't know exactly where this is supposed to take place, but it was filmed in Atlanta, and these mother drive from place to place in minutes. Have you ever driven in Atlanta? It takes an hour to go like three blocks to the nearest Kroger. All right, you guys head home, and I will call as soon as I get the egg. What a dumb gesture. If Max were going to play hero ball, why didn't he drive himself out here? And what's his plan after he gets the egg if they're going to take the van? He's going to stand out at the end of the driveway and wait for a goddamn Uber? Yeah, why are you still here? Michelle would be excellent at cinema sense. If I go home now, and then I read in the newspaper tomorrow that you all died, I'll just stuff the that I left. You still read the newspaper? That's what you got from that. Hey, I remember that joke from Crazy Stupid Love, too. How are we going to get into this place? 
go. I love this sequence of the movie, especially when they get the egg, but it's a series of giant conveniences. This shit is timed more perfectly than Bill Murray's armored car robbery in Groundhog Day. Definite breaking and entering, even if unlocked. Rich people are uh. I hear this was pitched as the official slogan of the Sanders campaign. Nah, I don't believe it. Oh, you, mm -mm. <laughs> okay. Well, I took a picture with him at the club. I put it in a hidden folder. Jesus, a hidden folder you can access in under 1.5 seconds? That shit was already pulled up when you dug the phone out of your purse, wasn't it? That shit is your wallpaper if you can show it to him this quickly. Hey, you really sound like a guy who wants to have a kid. I know arguments come up at inconvenient times in reality, but this couple is shown to be comically focused on this adventure tonight. So, do we really need this manufactured tension? Okay, if you're hosting an illegal fight club in your basement, you are not having your money butler counting the money and opening your private safe in the same room in the great wide open. And if you are, you certainly aren't also keeping keeping a precious Fabergé egg in there at the moment. God damn, this dude should have a caged money center like at casinos. Look how easy this dude just stole the egg. If the fight doesn't end right now with the fighter falling at his feet, he probably gets away with it too. That's why you don't do your illegal fight club in the same room as your safe. There is zero chance this dude with the egg somehow escapes this entire antagonistic basement full of people, but the movie suggests it only takes a simple juke move. The egg survives this, 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 and this. I'm adding 10 sins for how much the egg survives in this sequence. Also, this is the most convoluted house ever built. At least three of Mr. Fight Club's henchmen employees chase after the egg, but give up when the thieves drive away in a minivan. Not one of them jumps in a car and continues the pursuit. You didn't invest in Panera. I ate at Panera. This is like saying I invest in McDonald's every week when I buy another heart-choking McMuffin on my way down to record the Sincast podcast. Rigging the game so Max wins may make up for cheating against him all those years, but it also f over all the other competitors, and kind of robs Max from winning on his own without help. Brooks is a dick even when he's trying to stop being a dick. Freeze! Gary? Max seems surprised Gary showed up, but he left all that blood on the carpet and the dog and the ex-wife memorial wall. He had to know Gary would show up at some point, right? I thought he was counting on it, to be honest. Hello, I need an ambulance. Yeah, what happens to this ambulance, by the way? Gary planned a lot of shit out, but he can't turn off emergency services, can he? And no one in this area heard that mess of gunshots? Did they enter the mirror dimension on the way here? So, so this whole thing, the Fabergé egg, the Bulgarian, that was you? You've lost me. Gary acts like he has no idea about the rich guy in the egg, but that was what Jason Bateman searched on Gary's computer. And his end credits plan shows he knew about that guy anyway. Look at all that goddamn mother traffic on the street behind them. Why hasn't anyone reacted to the myriad of gunfire out here? What the hell is wrong with you? I'm just trying to buy myself some time. I not much. We're just gonna cut it out of you on the jet. Hell, why not do it right here? It's apparently the most remote area in the whole city. You know, you don't have to do this because I can just poop it out. Thing I said to my local doctor more than once somehow makes it into this movie. Whoa! Brooks sees the car before it turns the corner to be visible. It's honestly becoming one of my most hated tropes. That's my brother. Get us in the air. Now! <laughs> Why? This is the goddamn Bulgarian, one of the most feared criminals on the planet. Is he really scared off by Max, who's at best working in middle management? Trucks were coming! <laughs> ah, the rare but annoying combination of this works and everyone survives this. Also, even for a small airport, there would be some security out here noticing the car taking out a private jet. The guard stands in one place for a long time for the charades game to take place. I said nothing. This movie does such a great job in subverting typical action movie tropes that it's really jarring when it's played so straight. I wish I could say something funny about it. This silly Bulgarian character has sapped the humor right out of me. It's not Michael C. Hall's fault, but damn. Put that little knife down. Max says this instead of just shooting the bad guy that definitely threatened to cut the Witsec list out of Brooks' stomach. Just shoot, just shoot. And that's how you get the drop on someone. Okay, but they heard Max up there earlier. Did they not hear you because they were busy? You remember the wit sec list that I swallowed? Sure. I pooped it out and sold it for $3 million in the black market. I'm no expert, but I'm pretty sure that's not how paper digestion works. This is me at the Regal Cinema. Regal Cinemas. Bun in the oven. <laughs> Wait, what? Yes. Holy shit, she waited until game night to tell him this? Okay, seriously, some of the most fun end credits ever, so I'm gonna take another sin off. Sorry, this movie is awesome. Well, thank you not to besmirch my ex-wife. You're never gonna be able to hold on to Asia, you hear me? I am taking over South America and there ain't nothing you can do about it. Tied up, feel the tension, it's fun. That was terrible, now you have a chance to win. Uh, Are we gonna go to school or? I forbid it. I'm a little curious. Did you blow yourself? No. Yeah, right. You're so repressed. Because I never tried to suck my own No, because you won't admit to it. 
Oh, this is easy. Annie, uh, the famous actor that we met at the airport about eight years ago. Michael Flatley, Lord of the Dance. That is correct. Who the hell are you? Oh. In the face! In the face! They, because there's this guy, they call him the Bulgarian. He's got his fingers in all these pies around the world. Oh, he's got an old timey name. But awesome. he just wanted wow. me to help him find this Fabergé egg. <laughs> that movie? Sorry, I'm nervous. This kid from work, Ricky, couldn't remember whether you ordered pens with blue ink or black. But Ricky was a god for 10 minutes when he trounced the maitre d' of a local food court. You want to, like, have some wine coolers on a football field with Rebecca de Mornay? This is Miss de Mornay. It's de Mornay. Rebecca de Mornay. I even took five grand every time we played Monopoly before we even started playing the game. I learned the facts of life from watching the facts of life! Oh, God, Annie! Oh. Now I have a machine gun. Oh.